Hey, Doug, how'd that discount double check work out for you? Oh, that was great. Good. Yeah. I just, I wish I had double checked before discussing that play earlier. Did anybody catch that play? No. No. Nope. Okay, we're going to act like we're debating about it. You two do the bouncy football thing. You rub your head like it's a real tough call. No, that looks like you're having a migraine. I'm going to break the huddle confidently, and we're going to call it incomplete. Your mic's on! First down! Thank you! 70,000 people were there. 20 million more watching at home. Got it! Save big with State Farm. Taking great care of your teeth and gums is a job that we take seriously at Whole Dental Health. Routine dental checkups and cleanings are an important part of maintaining a healthy smile and overall wellness. We screen for everything from gum disease to bite problems to oral cancer, and you will learn about the need for additional treatment options that may be necessary. Our excellent care and treatment options will provide you with the beautiful smile you've been dreaming about. Contact our friendly team at Whole Dental Health at 605-835-9671 to inquire about your next dental exam. The spirit of cooperation has always been a part of farming and ranching. Today, that spirit is alive and well at your local co-op, which supplies its valued members with the opportunity to grow and be profitable. For as long as people have been farming, they have always understood the benefit of working together. Your cooperative, local, loyal, trusted by generations. Rosebud Farmers Union is a proud supporter of all area youth and the Gregory Gorillas. Stop by Rosebud Farmers Union Co-op in Gregory or Fairfax today for all of your farming needs. Dakota Auto Care at 112 West Fifth Street in Gregory, South Dakota is a Napa Auto Care Center using quality Napa parts to perform high quality diagnostics and repair services on all foreign and domestic automobiles. All technicians employed are ASC certified. Jason and the crew are dedicated to customer satisfaction and maintain the highest standards of the automotive service profession. For all your automotive repairs, call 605-835-8866. Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. until 5.30 p.m. Dakota Auto Care is a proud supporter of all Gregory Gorilla and Lady Gorilla activities. Activities. Fogel Chiropractic and Gregory is your chiropractic leader in South Central South Dakota. We meld the best chiropractic techniques with the most effective and advanced rehabilitation for spine and joint related problems. Doctors David and Jerry Fogel specialize in myofacial release for the treatment of rotator cuff, elbow, knee, and hip injuries. We provide a FootMax gait scan for treatment and evaluation of foot issues. Fogel's is a VA chiropractic provider and accepts all major insurances, including Medicare. Find us online at drfogel.com. Come. Whether you are looking for home, auto, or health insurance, Farmers Union Insurance Company focuses on all your needs. We offer exceptional customer service and follow through. Whatever your insurance needs are, we have got you covered. Individual and commercial policies are available upon request. Locally owned and operated. <laughs> Farmers Union Insurance. Call us today. We've got a history of serving you. A history of family-owned community banking that goes back over 100 years. We grew up here. We're local. And local ownership means local decisions. It means our products are tailored to meet local needs. We take pride in our support of many local organizations and encourage community growth through charitable contributions and employee involvement. First Fidelity Bank, member FDIC. First class banking on a first name basis. Some people say the good old days are gone, but Harry K keeps proving them all wrong. The K stands for quality, like the way things used to be. But that sales and service in Central South Eklund Tax Service, located at 323 Main Street in Gregory, South Dakota, is available for all your tax preparations. Mark Eklund has been a staple in the Gregory community for many years and wants to help you and your business have success by specializing in all types of bookkeeping. Eklund Tax can take care of any agricultural, retail, or personal bookkeeping or tax preparation. Call Mark at Eklund Tax today at 605-835-9665.
Hey, Doug, how'd that discount double check work out for you? Oh, that was great. Good. Yeah. I just, I wish I had double checked before discussing that play earlier. Did anybody catch that play? No. No. Nope. Okay, we're going to act like we're debating about it. You two do the bouncy football thing. You rub your head like it's a real tough call. No, that looks like you're having a migraine. I'm going to break the huddle confidently, and we're going to call it incomplete. Your mic's on! First down! Thank you! 70,000 people were there. 20 million more watching at home. Got it! Save big with State Farm. Taking great care of your teeth and gums is a job that we take seriously at Whole Dental Health. Routine dental checkups and cleanings are an important part of maintaining a healthy smile and overall wellness. We screen for everything from gum disease to bite problems to oral cancer, and you will learn about the need for additional treatment options that may be necessary. Our excellent care and treatment options will provide you with the beautiful smile you've been dreaming about. Contact our friendly team at Whole Dental Health at 605-835-9671 to inquire about your next dental exam. The spirit of cooperation has always been a part of farming and ranching. Today, that spirit is alive and well at your local co-op, which supplies its valued members with the opportunity to grow and be profitable. For as long as people have been farming, they have always understood the benefit of working together. Your cooperative, local, loyal, trusted by generations. Rosebud Farmers Union is a proud supporter of all area youth and the Gregory Gorillas. Stop by Rosebud Farmers Union Co-op in Gregory or Fairfax today for all of your farming needs. Dakota Auto Care at 112 West 5th Street in Gregory, South Dakota is a Napa Auto Care Center using quality Napa parts to perform high quality diagnostics and repair services on all foreign and domestic automobiles. All technicians employed are ASC certified. Jason and the crew are dedicated to customer satisfaction and maintain the highest standards of the automotive service profession. For all your automotive repairs, call 605-835-8866. Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. until 5.30 p.m. Dakota Auto Care is a proud supporter of all Gregory Gorilla and Lady Gorilla activities. Activities. Good evening, Great Gorillas Live Nation. This is Clay Lundberg coming to you from the Gregory Memorial Auditorium for a Burke Gregory duel against Parkston tonight. We're starting off with some exhibition action in the 133 pound weight class. We've got Gunnar Stevens from Burke Gregory wrestling against. I'm sorry, I did not catch the name of the Parkston kid. Google Chiropractic and Gregory is your chiropractor. Now work and get a tip, get some back points, work to a pinning combination. Fighting for hand control, seeing how to, oh, looks like he's working towards the back, getting some back points here, now working towards getting parallel, or perpendicular. Yep. Sorry. He's working his way to a headlock finish. Fifteen seconds left here in the first period. Be working towards a pissy if he can get a first period pin or if the clock's gonna run out on him here. For sure has three back points solidified. And he's saved by the bell. Going into the second period, Gunner's up five nothing. With choice, Gunner defers. Parkston takes top, so Gunner goes down. Go, Trying to get the clock reset back to two minutes. Standard time for a period here in South Dakota High School Wrestling.
Here we go, getting underway, top man on. Start of the second period. Gunner working on a stand up, needs to get his hands cleared. And he is out for a one point escape. Clarkson kid in on a shot. Gunner is able to sprawl and get his way around to get control for two more points. Up eight, nothing. Working towards a pin in combination once again. He's got him past the threshold, so he's getting back points. Near fall points. As he settles in for a pin here. Hops around, finishes a different way. Forty seconds left here in the second period. Gunner's now solidified an eleven nothing lead. Stretches him out to a honeymooner. See if he can settle the pin here. He's got plenty of time. There it is. There's the pinfall for Mr. Gunner Stevens from Burke Gregory. Goes to shake James Bamer's hand, Parkston's head coach. Here's some more exhibition action. We have our own court Shona bomb from Burt Gregory, a Burt kid, and then he is wrestling Cade Thuringer from Parkston. Court in on an early shot, unfortunately unfavorable to finish it. Turns into a cradle for Thuringer from Parkston. Looking for the pin here. He's got the two takedown, three near fall for certain. Up five to nothing with a feet to back move there. Court working get up and out again. Working on hand control. Just not able to get separation. Like Thuringer's working towards a half. Gives up on that. Thuringer is going to get a tip here. Get, ooh, all the way to the pin. Seventh grader Thur Cade Thuringer gets the fall over Kurt Schoenbaum. Again, that's an exhibition match. Here comes Owen Hansen to start the duel tonight. A seventh grader out of Burke Gregory at the 106 pound weight class. We have a sophomore, Riley Weber from Parkston here, wrestling in the 103 pound, 106 pound weight class, sorry. 
was 103 pounds back when I was in high school and wrestling a million years ago. So. I bet you can hear me now, Clay, can't I you? Can, yeah. <laughs> How I about that? forgot to plug in the other cord there. <laughs> now I'm going to control my volume a little bit. That's really loud. It's all right. Riley looking for an early shot. Has a collar tie on. Off the mat. Reset to the middle here in neutral position. Now what weight class are we on now? 106. Clay? Trying to keep track of the... Yep, we're to the varsity now in 106. Okay. We had two exhibition matches and then 106 varsity and... We'll run through clear to heavyweight, and I imagine we'll have some more exhibition matches as we get done. So, If people are looking at the scoreboard on the screen, I did the BG and Parkson instead of trying to keep up with the last names because yeah. just most of the time they don't fit. That's fair. Completely fair. Oh, and in deep on a shot, looking to a double. Looks to double off here. Oh, cannot quite finish the shot before going out of bounds. Reset into neutral position. 38 seconds left here in the first period. Riley, another shot in. Oh, and a good counter. Almost an even better counter by Weber. Ties back up, goes for a little... In deep on a tie. Calls a reset. Heads back to the middle of the mat. <laughs> Riley. Owen tries grabbing a leg really quick. Working his way, trying to get his. Gives up the takedown right at the end of the period. Web. John Hansen. Pulling coaches, pulling out official aside to talk about that late take uh, takedown, whether or not that was a takedown or not, it appears it's going to stand. Imagine we're only a couple of years away from replay in high school sports, right? I'm sure it's not far out. I can do it on here. Exactly, I'm <laughs> saying. Get more of these schools on this live connection. We can. Uh, yep. With, I know if I make a phone call real quick, it can get set up in about 30 seconds. So. Good to know. Terrifying, but good to know. We do do it on football. Sure. For fun, we do it on football. Yeah. You bet. Ooh, Riley was going for the head. Potentially dangerous. That knee angle was getting a little bit too, uh, too close to looking too bad. So we're going to reset here. Weaver hits a switch. Looking to get the reversal here in waterfall position. Owen brings him back to it. Checking that leg. Oh, off the mat. Did you wrestle all four years of high school, Clay? I did, yeah. Yep. Wrestled as a little kid in AAU for quite a few years and then took a couple of years off. And then seventh grade year, I got back into it and wrestled all the way through till, till I graduated. So. Riley gets the reversal on Owen, takes a 4 nothing lead here late in the, or middle of the second period. Looking to pick up a cradle, it looks like. So Riley's looking for a tip here. It's another almost almost gets another cradle hooked up. Oh, gets that half in there really deep. This will probably be back points if you can get him over that for that 90 degree line. No count. Owen gets back to his back to his belly. Works back up to his physical base. Knows that Riley's looking for those tips, so he's protecting his head pretty well. 
10 seconds left in the second period here. Looks like we're going to head into the third for... Ooh, well. Well, if he can get his leg free, oh dear. Just not enough time. Really good idea to scramble out of that. Just couldn't get his leg free to establish control and get two for a reversal. Owen's choice here coming into the third period. Owen chooses neutral position. So both wrestles are start, start back up on their feet. Being down by four here in the start of the third, he needs to look for a shot. This is not what we're looking for. Well, it is able to duck out of that throw and take it to take down, but Weber's really fast with a reversal here. Go back up six to two. Weber still looking for back points, looking for a tip, looking for some kind of pinning combination. Owen looking to get back to his back to his feet and get out and get some kind of something going here offensively. Our official calls a stillmate and they're calls him out of bounds. And take him back to the middle of the mat and get him back to work. Oh, and up right away, he's looking for a Granby roll. It does not go well. It gets blocked there by Weber. Looks like Weber's looking for a cradle inside there. Owen's looking to change his position. Wow. That looked a little more aggressive than it needed to be. There's a difference between working the head and then just taking a shot at someone. Looks like he's got an inside cradle hooked. Gets him rolled over, gets him on some back points. Gets his knee down to the ribs. Ah, gets the fall with five seconds left in the third period. Clarkson will take a six nothing lead here on the, on the night against the Burke Gregory Storm. You know, that's one thing I've noticed about wrestling. I was never big into it, but they travel well. Yeah. They always travel oh, well, yeah. whether it's districts, regions, Absolutely. state. I mean, there's always at least 50 people at yep. each event. Absolutely. Bert Gregory travels well, and Parkston travels incredibly well as well. I mean, you'll if you go to, to a weekend tournament, you'll hear some pretty good cheering sections, and they'll more likely be the Parkston crowd and the Bert Gregory crowd. Yeah. They're Is this passionate. Our, is this the exhibition for 106, or no, do we go up still, a weight class? No, this is still 100. This, this is uh, 113. 113? Yeah, this will be all varsity matches until the end of the duel, and then they'll do more, um, I would imagine they'll do more exhibition matches. They just had one in the beginning of the one day exhibition? They had two in the beginning. Okay. And then if, if those kids can get enough rest, there's, you know, they can get another match squeezed in. That's really good for those younger wrestlers to get experience. And there's one thing to get experience in a wrestling room. There's an entirely different different experience getting wrestling, wrestling somebody in, else in your team in a live yeah looks like we've got blood time for mr hood here this is the 113 pound match tonight mason hood and i'm sorry i did not catch the name of the parkston kid looks like landon Sudlet sudbeck is their only 113 pound listed but that does not mean that's who's wrestling you can bump and you can go up or down you can go you can go up one weight class if you're as long as you're under right yeah yep. okay because I believe J.J. Beck moved up to wrestle that St. Pierre kid, yep. if I'm not yes, mistaken. Yes, that's correct. And I think that's one of J.J.'s only losses. Yeah, I would imagine so, yeah. Yeah, that St. Pierre kid out of Wagner is really tough. Yeah, I know I was talking to J.J. not that all that. I think it was the last time we did a duel, and he said, you know, I had him in a good position until I realized how tall he was. Yeah. Yep. But I guess what are our wrestlers' records this year? I guess I'm not entirely certain. I don't think they have it on any of the South Dakota Activities Association. The uh, 
Maybe there's something under the... Uh, Oh, who ranks these guys? Um, Is it Dakota Grappler? Dakota Grappler, yeah, that's usually has the rankings listed there. Mason in deep on a shot, looking to suck that leg in, get his two. Sudbeck doing a nice job pulling that off, getting to a front headlock position. Mason still working on that leg. Off the mat they go, back to the middle in neutral position. Ooh. Looks like they both kind of went in for a shot, a little throw attempt there by Sudbeck. Nicely blocked by Hood. Back in into deep into a shot in waterfall position. Needs to clear his head. Yeah. Ah. It's called for an illegal move. I believe that was a head scissors. You're allowed to figure for the head. You're not allowed to scissors the head. Puts too much pressure. That's a lot of words in a very short amount of time. What's figure that? for the head. But not yeah, scissors. sorry. Yeah, you're allowed to, to put your legs in kind of that figure four position um, around the head because you can kind of protect the head a little bit in that. You're not allowed to scissors the head. You're allowed to scissors the body and not figure four the body. It's a, kind of one of those nerdy things you pick up through the years. <laughs> Heading to the second position, or second period, rather. Oh. Subbeck works his way, works around, and gets the reversal. Takes a 3-1 lead here over Hood in the start of the third peri second period. Mason working to fend off what Subbeck's trying to do offensively as well as work back to his base. Reading through, I know on one of the programs that Sports Ticket Live does, they have panic button, and I know he goes back and finds the rankings. This the last time he updated this was 12:31, so not mm. too long. I mean, a yeah. month ago. Yep. Over a month ago. Oops. Um, I'm back working to a pinning combination, working getting those back points there, the those near fall points. The most one I've seen Sorry. right now that I recognize. You're fine, Clay. Uh, JJ Beck was rated number one. Yeah. At 182 yep. at, at this current time. I mean, I can't find the other website to do that. Hmm. Sudback works his way to the pin there. Parkson will take a 12 nothing Lead over the, Bert, up there, over Burke Gregory here tonight. With another pinfall. Move to the 120 weight count with weight pound, pound weight class. Must have been open. Yeah, 120 we are open. So Tucker Murtha takes the forfeit and puts us back down 18 points now.
We're back live. Just doing a sound check. If if there's anything where people can't hear, please let us know. Yeah, please do. Otherwise, we don't know. Right, yeah. And Otherwise we want to make sure everybody can hear. Really weird broadcast just watching, you know. I guess you could put fake ones on, but at this point in time, <laughs> if they can't hear us, we're doing that anyways. Yeah, exactly. This is our, our newest exchange student, Emilio, Emilio Clemente. Wrestling at 126 pounds, he is wrestling Cordell Murtha from Parkston, the sophomore. Murtha's working a pinning combination here on Clemente. Ah, works his way to the pin. I was told that there wasn't a lot of wrestling with that young man before he came here. No, there was not. There was a nice write-up about him in the Gregory paper uh, last week. And he mentioned that uh, he had not been a part of that, but tried is trying it and seems to like it. And how about that? Yeah, can't, the, can't gets you that. involved. Exactly. Here we have Jackson Eklund, a sophomore out of Burt Gregory, and Joa Mah Noah Mahoney. Is that the From, 132? Uh, 132, yes, sir. 132 pound weight class. Oh my, Jackson gets on a shot, gets an inside cradle hooked up, gets it turned, and he gets him pinned. Makes awfully quick work, puts Burt Gregory on the board with six big points on a, on a fall here. I really don't know what you'd do with that one. You, you, you just say, nice job. There, there's nothing you can do. You can fight and kick out of a cradle as, as hard as you can, but if you get the hands really locked in, you know, there are some people Not going like, anywhere. no, there's some people like Jackson that can hook a cradle that tight and hook it that, hook it that well, and you just kind of say, good job, then you move on. The 138 pound weight class now. We have got Frank Even from Burt Gregory. Getting some feedback from Mr. Jody Brozik. I said, Where do I find the rankings? He said, Go to Dakota Grappler and find the um, message board. Yes, they do typically keep that pretty well updated on there with the latest rankings in both Class A and Class B. Frank even get the takedown. Now he's working towards a, a cradle. Gets his knee in the ribs, looking to get a foot hook so he can make it even tighter. Frank even pulls off the pin for Burt Gregory. Scoring us six more points, cutting Parkson's lead in half. We're now down 12 to 24. 145 pound weight class now. Mr. Finn Hansen from Burt Gregory coming to wrestle. From Logan Heidinger from Parkston. Been working a two on one. I'm looking to work that to a leg, but good defense here from Heidinger. Heidinger with some offense of his own, gets a cut under hook and a collar, trying to work towards something like something called something for a takedown. Been working to pop that underhook to some to a shot to either a single or a knee tap. Got an underhook and an overhook. Looks to move that to a knee. Uses that underhook to hit a far knee tap and get his two point takedown. I don't know how to run that site. If you can find it, yeah, cool. they've made major changes to it in the last few years, and it's a little bit hard to navigate now too. Um, 
at least on the mobile site. I don't know about their their full desktop site. I'm not on it nearly as much as I used to be. Been working a cross face here. Chance in giving him a little bit of advice how to improve his position. Takes that cross face into a cradle. Gets a cheap tip. Gets the point back points here. And the pinfall over Mr. Heidinger from Parkston. Finn gets another big pin for us. Brings us within six of Parkston. Mr. Tyler Murray. 152, I heard that if I heard that correctly, right, Clay? Yes, you did hear that correctly. 152 pound weight class now. Looks like going off the mat, reset. Tyler gets a shot, gets a takedown. right away to a spiral ride to break down his opponent. Oh, moves like this make this old heavyweight a little bit nervous. Anytime you're rolling yourself across your back, that's never a good idea for a heavyweight, but these littler guys like Tyler can get away with it. Looking now for a suck back. Gets it sucked back. Now he needs to settle his way, settle in. If he can bring that other shoulder. There it is. Just like that, we've got ourselves a duel here. Tied at 24. Tyler picks up the pin there. to the 160 pound weight class now. We've got Terran Sir from Burke Gregory. Against Dawson Semler, a senior from Parkston. Gets in on a single. Tyson Ter Terran's working his way out of that. Unfortunately, he's not able to. Loses his footing there. And Semler is able to get the takedown. Cheap tip. He's going to get his back point, see if Taron can wrestle his way back to his base, and he does. Semler solidifies two near fall points. We're a 4 nothing lead, 4 nothing lead. Now he works his way into a cradle, brings Taron back to his shoulders. Put his knee in the good spot and settles in for the pin. score sits at 30 to 24. Parkston Trojans back on top. As we head to the 170 pound weight class. Must be open. We are, Burke Gregory is open. So Lucas Beats records the forfeit. For the 182 pounds now. JJ Beck takes his way to the mat. Against Slayton Negabauer. 
I think this is going to be a pretty good match. I do believe, yeah. Both juniors. Both, I think, last I saw are actually up there in rankings. I would imagine so, yeah. JJ gets an early takedown. Gets his leg in. Gets both legs in, stretches him out. Breaks down his base. Can work to... That was an early stalemate there. Gets him back into a referee's position. Eggerberg has a good move off the whistle, but JJ just a little too strong for him. JJ gets a cheap tip, gets some near fall points. Takes him back to his belly to work something else here. Takes a 5 nothing lead here. One minute gone in the first period. There's a deep waist in. Slayton looking for an escape here. JJ not giving up easily. Gets back to that deep waist, gets to working towards the head, but Slayton getting away from him. Fortunately, JJ is able to hang on and get him off the mat to get through the reset. Fifteen seconds left here in the first period. JJ looking probably for some more back points, maybe looking for a pinning combination. <laughs> Nothing doing, rides him out on the in, in the first period. Heads to the second with choice, he defers. Parkston's choice, Parkston takes down. Nigenbauer goes back to that down position. What are the advantages and disadvantages of up or down? I mean, what's kind of depends on what you're more comfortable with. Um, you know, I you know you'll if you ever if you ever watch uh, John Hansen almost notoriously and almost always tells his wrestlers to go down um, because if you're in that down position, you have the opportunity to get an escape, uh, get back to your feet. Um, it, it's it's a, it's a better spot. But if you're you know, if you're a good wrestler that can really turn kids and get back points like that, you can really rack up points and uh, have pinning opportunities like that. It just kind of a, just kind of depends on what your what your strengths are. Gotcha. Yep. I learned something new today. There you go. One thing you never have to worry about with wrestling coaches, you can hear them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, John is not a quiet coach. Rich is not a quiet coach. Brian's not a quiet coach. Uh, the Parkston coaches are all kids that I wrestled. They're not kids. We're all, you know, 30s now. But uh, they're all people that was, that was in high school when I was in high school. So that their head coach is James Bamber that wrestled when I was in high school. And uh, Brady Knowles I went to college with, to tell you the truth. So... Uh, people I've known for quite some time. and Where are the old, uh, I shouldn't say old, it just they were <laughs> older than me. Yeah. The Kokesh and Storley and all that. Are they still wrestling or are they done now? Well, a lot of them are done now. Um, Richard Kokesh went to Nebraska and wrestled for them for quite a few years. Had a really, really nice career wrestling for Nebraska. And then moved back to his mom and dad's farm there outside of Wagner. And just um, farming. Just farming. Yeah. And then Storley went to Minnesota, had a really, really nice career wrestling for the Gophers, and I believe he's doing MMA now. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yep, there's a couple of those Minnesota, the Webster to Minnesota connection was pretty strong after Brock Lesnar, and then, you know, they've kind of they've kind of stayed in touch with it, you know, that those two programs, and a uh, couple of different uh, pretty good, ooh, nice ankle pick there for JJ to get another takedown. Gets that knee into a pretty precarious spot, so they're going to go ahead and restart there. 
That's one thing, you know, like I said, I don't know a lot about wrestling, but when you watch JJ, he might give you an inch. Yeah. But then he's going to take a mile. Absolutely. Yep. Just right there, you've seen he got one point, but he turned around and turned his points in four more. Exactly. I mean, just yep, absolutely. He knows what he's doing, and he's very good at it. Absolutely. Yep, he's a very tough wrestler. Ends the second period with a 9-2 lead. Heading into the third, J.J. takes down. Looking for a quick escape, a reversal. Get back into an offensive position here. J.J. to his feet right away. He needs to get hands cleared and get out. We'll see what... Gives him that one. kind of gives him the take, gives him the escape. Which, when you don't think you can hold a guy down, is probably a better thing to do. That one point escape, if you can turn it in, turn it like you know, like we just saw JJ do, you know, give him a turn one point into escape, a takedown or something. Turn it into a takedown, turn it into a feet to back situation where you're getting back points right away, a five point move, which is what Negabauer is going to need here. Gives him the reset here. How many years has Coach Hansen been coaching? Has he wow. coached? Has he coached since he's been a teacher? I believe, yeah. So he's going on. I want to say he's in the 40s. Easily, yeah. I saw a post from Nate Hansen from two or three years ago on Facebook saying that it was his dad's 40th, and that was two or three or four years ago. So that's been quite some time since he had 40 years of coaching wrestling. He's one of the longest standing teachers in that high school, too. Yes, sir. I think he is the longest standing now because Larkin's gone. Right. Yep. Larkin may be listening. He <laughs> follows us pretty closely. He might. Good to know. Good to know. I'll tell you that math wasn't my strongest subject in school, but <laughs> isn't it? it isn't anybody's sure. stronger subject? There are a few of those odd folks that really do math and do math well. It's not mine, and I I really wasn't that hurt about it. No, me neither. I I, I will say, a classmate of mine, Paxton Johnson, who's doing very well now. She's a physics major. Wow. <laughs> and so clearly, she enjoyed math. Yep. Yep. Uh, she's graduated now in California on a naval base. Okay. Yeah, so there there That's are great. a few out there. Yeah, there are, you know. I had a Mr. Murray's aerospace yep. engineer. Absolutely. And what does he teach? Ooh. Calculus. Yes. <laughs> JJ with a nice single leg take down there. Looks like he's going to let him go there. Takes a 14 to 3 win. It's the major decision. We head to the 197 pound weight class. Looks like Mr. Ross Oliver fights. Yes, sir. That is Mr. Ross Oliver. You know, we usually have Mr. Moose Oliver up here. Yeah. But I think he's being a dad tonight. He's being a spectator. Fair. Fair. He, he said he was really struggling, not screaming into the. <laughs> I understand that completely. And I still think he actually screamed into it at one point in time because <laughs> Ridge had a really good pin, if I remember I right. I believe it. I believe it. Thankfully, there's, you know, guys that run audio switches like you that can turn us down <laughs> if we get too fired up here. This is Brady Schoenfelter from Parkston, a senior, wrestling here. Against Mr. Oliver. And on a two-on-one tie, kind of cuts him loose there, and then Ross kind of teased a little shot, but didn't have anything come of it. Here, Schoenfelter's in on a leg, but Ross is able to get the wizard in, get the head stuck, get two of his own. Get two for himself there. Oh. Able to grab, and Schoenfeld are able to grab an arm, start to pull Ross into a disadvantageous position. He gets too high. He's got the leg in, so he's not, he can still salvage himself, but 
If you get too high, you can get pulled back under and get a reversal. It'll give a reversal up pretty quick. There he's getting his body moved around. He's holding on. He's he is, yeah. He's Oh, to his back. All right, wrestles his Schoenfeld wrestles his way back to his base. No points on that one? No points. Not, it, it, you need to get at least a, a, a two count to get points there um, on, those, on those near fall points. And he was already in control. He's not, he, he, when you take that takedown, you get control, and hasn't, nothing's been done to lose control yet, except for here. That's going to be a reversal for two as the period comes to an end. We got a nice little match on our hands yes, here. Yes, sir. Parkston's choice, Mr. Schoenfeld that goes down. Ooh. Able to get Ross out of position, hit a switch and get his reversal there. Gets a leg in right away, working on a cross face. Working on a power half. Calls it potentially hazardous on that and resets to the neutral position or referee's position. Ross gets a foot up right away. Looks like he's Tried a Granby roll there, look almost looked like. He's getting pulled, it'll getting the leg pulled in. Let's see if he can get his way to a reversal here. Oh, he's gonna lose hold of that leg. Ooh, double chicken wing, locking him over the head. Getting near fall points and the pin. A double chicken wing position is not the most comfortable position to be in. Sometimes that's another one where you just kind of go for the, you just want the pin to come quick because you want to get out of it. Open. Open at 220 pounds. Parkston takes the forfeit. We might be open up until Ridge. Yes, sir. Here he comes. 285 pound weight class. Here comes Ridge Oliver. Is this the final weight class? Yes, sir. This will be, but I do see some younger. Couple exhibitions. Couple exhibition afterwards. Of course, Schoenbaum's going to get another match here after Ridge takes oh, the Ridge forfeit. Oh, Ridge took, okay. Okay. So we got one exhibition. One exhibition match. My goodness, we're moving right along. Yes, sir. Those young men can't be much more than sixth graders. Porter Megabauer is a seventh grader. Court's a ninth grader. Wow. Yeah. But this is a 106-pound weight class. Megabauer in on a shot. Court looking to... Fend off. Potentially hazardous. That angle of the knee gets in a weird spot and don't want to blow out an ACL here in an exhibition match, so they call it potentially hazardous and have him reset in neutral position. The kid that just wrestled for Parkson over there looks like he caught a head to the nose. He's Yeah, he's got tape. Yeah, he's taped up. That can be to cover a cut or... Usually that's what that is. That's what that is. Yeah. For those wondering about the final team score, since we're now to the exhibition match, this team score will not change. Parkston does defeat Burt Gregory tonight by a score of 48 to 34 for the team score. Caution Red did not have his arm in the right spot at the start. Court looking for a switch. Does not get one, gets back.
Niggerbauer working around the head, has a chicken wing in. Is getting back points here as Court tries to bridge out of it. Thirty seconds left here in the first period. Plenty of time to fight. Short time is what we usually call this. Is oh, awfully tight there. Gets into a body lock and gets the pin there. I'll tell you what, I like these duels over those tournaments. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I imagine we, uh, if we got, if we actually started on time, we had about 50 minutes of wrestling there. 50, 57 minutes of live time, and I was running okay. about 10 minutes of All right, ads, so, so we're yep. about, about 45 minutes. There we are, yeah. Well, what do you think, Clay? These boys, uh, this is the last one I will be broadcasting for them yep. uh, because they'd be heading off to districts and regions and then state. Well, actually, they changed it a few oh, years so is it ago. just so regions just now? Just to a region tournament. Okay, interesting. And that'll be Saturday in Miller for us. Uh, I don't know. I've been kind of out of it long enough. I don't know who is in the old region 6B as the being because it used to be Parkston was in our region as well. Uh, used to be one of the tougher regions, but uh, I've kind of lost track of who's, uh, what, who's aligned with who and who ended up in what region now, but uh, our region tournament is in Miller, and I believe wrestling starts at 10 o'clock on Saturday. Gotcha. In Miller. And listening to some of this chitter-chatter around town and in Burke and talking to some of the people who really follow wrestling, I think we're going to have a very number of kids yeah. that are going to wrestle very well at regions and Absolutely. even possibly a couple state champs. We, yes, we got some very good wrestlers this year. We do. We have a very good wrestling room, a very deep, you know, very good roster. Uh, to keep kids motivated and keep kids training hard, even going into these later tournaments. And, yeah, we do have very quality wrestlers here for Burke Gregory. My eyes are on Mr. Beck and Mr. Eklund. Yes, sir. That's I think there's two very, very, probably, probably top, a couple of the top kids in the state. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, they've been at the, at, at the top or near the top of the rankings almost all season, so... We see uh, Mr. Murray. He was hiding the entire time for the <laughs> wrestling. Murray. Yeah. But uh, we're going to sign off. All right. Thank you so much for coming up, Clay. Not a problem. We really appreciate when you can uh, give some time for us. Anytime, you bet. I'm Eric Hamilton with Clay Lundberg. You're listening to Gregory Gorillas Live on GregoryGorillasLive.com. Good night, everybody. <laughs>